somebody that's trying to attack us. On that line before that, that person is going to show it's called three instant indicators. And there's three things that they're always going to do. 100% of the time, they'll always do this. So think about it in an animal sense. Think about the uh, kids who are watched on um, any type of animal planet or discovery where the tiger or the lion is starting to chase them. You know, like the poor little deer. It's just it's horrible, right? Is there any meaning of the roots for the lion? Nobody? Good. That's good. Does that mean that? Okay, so what I'm, I was going to say we're going to have to talk to them afterwards and get a little more information and maybe throw that down and tell the local authorities. But that usually doesn't happen. So, anyway, so here's, here's the thing, guys. When that tiger, that lion, that predator, that big cat is looking for that prey, they do three things every single time. They observe, so they're watching. They position themselves in a better position, and then they do what's called posture. Does anybody have a cat? Like a house cat? Malin? Malin? Malins? Yeah. You guys have a house cat? Like a cat? Yeah. So, have you ever seen your cat maybe go after like a bird? or maybe even like a toy, you were playing with your cat. So what does the cat do right before it attacks? So if you're playing with it, you look for those laser lights, you see like, so watch it first, and then what's it do? It pounces, but right before it pounces, what does it do? Yes, it gets ready, she said it gets ready. And you see what she did? She did this, so there's three things even a person will always do. They'll always do this. But they have notice how I keep that foot back. They always do the same similar things. Those are called universal behavioral patterns. So they're going to look, they're going to position themselves to get in a better position to be able to engage with you, and then they'll posture. So what we're doing is we're going to be operating off of that posture. So one of the most important things that they do when they posture is remove that shoulder. We're going to play a game. I'm going to show you some different types of strikes. And I want you to notice when I do these strikes how my shoulders are. So don't think I'm doing anything for power, don't think I'm doing anything for accuracy. Just look at these strikes. For instance, this is an elbow strike. This is a head punch. This is a front kick. This is a knee. This is a punch. This is a choke. Grab. So all those things, do you have to notice my shoulders move? So here's what I want you to do. You guys like Jamie? They don't know me. Listen, I don't know if I like her either. Oh, no, but I love Jamie Dennis. I mean, she's alright. Yeah, she's alright. So, let's not have Sandy. So here's the thing. I'm going to do all of those things to Jamie, and the only thing that prevent me things is her defending herself one but more importantly you guys are going to yell now actually we're going to yell stop the second you see my shoulder i'm going to do the same exact things that i just did but the second you see my shoulders move i want you to yell stop and if you don't yell loud enough you don't yell fast enough jamie's going to have to protect herself she's i'm probably going to get trouble with this right. so once again elbow strike Headbutt, a punch, a kick, a knee, a choke, all those things in my shoulder, right? And you're going to be slow the first one, so we're going to give you the first one. Okay? Y'all stop the second you see these shoulders. Stop! Really slow. You guys have to fast. Okay? We're in a gym. Yeah. 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 A little bit better. One more time. Stop. Man, you see that? The second it moves, you guys yell stop. Stop. Let's start a little louder. How about this? I want the head up. Stop. Good. How about the kick? Stop. Good. How about the knee? Stop. How about the grab? Stop. Stop. <laughs> so are you noticing that my shoulders have to move each time? My hands had a little more movement, but my shoulders had to move every single time, right? So now let's fast forward. Let's hit pause on that and fast forward a little bit. 
when something's happening before an actual event that's bad, we should carry ourselves a certain way, right? So, see how Mika's standing? See how Mika's standing right now? I guess. As cool as that looks, I'm going to teach you. It's so comfortable, right? Because I, I stand like that too. I can go like So here's the thing. I'm, I want you, instead of standing here with your hands down here, let's just try these three things. I want this one. Hand on chin. Go ahead and do this with you. I want you to notice what the common denominator is here. Arms folded. Didn't say arms crossed, did I? Arms folded. Good. How about energy posture? Not as complicated, but so much more, right? So let's do it again. Hand on chin. Arms folded. Energy posture. Watch this one. Defensive. So what's the common denominator? All four of those, the hands are in front of me. So instead of to the side or in my pockets or behind me, they're right here already. You guys ever noticed? Yeah. Have you guys ever noticed when a police officer is talking to somebody, they kind of have this distance, and they don't do you like this? Have you ever noticed that? If you haven't, YouTube it or, or look at pictures of police officers talking to a subject or, or even a citizen. So right here, this is called a reactionary gap, but their hands are always in front of them. They're always in front because let's, let's just practice this real quick here and see why. Let's go interview posture to defensive. Let's go hand on chin to defense. Let's go arms folded to defense. You see how easy that is now to go to defense. And why do I go to defense? To block. That's a good one. Or to intercept or cut the effectiveness of a strike. What else? Why else would I do this? You guys want to see? You guys want to take a little test? Kind of. Easier access to defense. Show? Good. So, just I'm going to show you two different pictures, and I want you guys to tell me who the aggressor is in these pictures. Okay? Ready? That was pretty aggressive, right? Who's the aggressor? The aggressor now. She is. No matter how cute she looks, me doing this. Makes me look like the aggressor to everybody else, right? So if something is happening to where you have the need, you feel the need to put these hands up and say, whoa, I don't want whatever you have coming towards me. Everybody else sees that. You understand? So all we're going to do is I want you to find a partner. And all I want you to do, everybody, is stand in front of that partner. And I want you to practice. I'm going to tell you first, hands on chin. I'm going to tell you, hands on chin, defensive. Good. But here's the thing. We're only going to have one person doing it at a time. So whoever's the bad guy, raise your hand. Bad guy. Bad guys. So, so bad guy, all I want you to do is literally just stand there. Okay, just stand there. So you're going to go with it. Ready? Here we go. Hand on chin, defensive. Arms folded. Defensive. So one's a bad guy, one's a bad guy. Interview, defensive. Good, and let's switch. Now let's switch, ready? Hands on chin, defensive. Arms folded, defensive. Interview, defensive. So everybody in here now did each one, right? When you guys saw those hands as the bad guy, did you feel like there was kind of a barrier there? Up, right? That's our brain tells us there's something in front of us, there's an obstacle, there's a barrier. Okay? So that's the first thing that we want to we want to get to. We want to get to that barrier. So if now all those things happen where this bad event is starting to uh, stir up, and now we're in that circle that actually we couldn't avoid it. We teach classes on recognizing it and then avoiding it before we get in it. But since we have this hour, we're gonna go right to the nitty-gritty that the action part of it so we don't want to happen. But it did happen. What's going to happen is as soon as you get in that circle, that event, you're going to have to start to protect yourself. And protecting yourself starts with this. It also starts with what you say. So every 
every time I put my hands up, I want you to verbalize something. Whether you're talking to her, whether you, whether you yell it out, a simple stop, back up, back, anything like that. Okay? The person might actually listen to that, correct? Once they see it's awesome. So, let's move on. When Jamie's facing me, if Jamie's the, the good guy and I'm the bad guy, she starts with defensive posture. That's what we're going to start with today. She's watching that shoulder movement that we talked about. That shoulder movement, the second that I move that shoulder, she's going from defensive and she's closing the distance. So let me explain something real quick. <laughs> so, let me explain something really fast before we get into this. Self-defense, ladies, is about distance. It's about options. The best option is distance. Okay? So we're seeing Sandy yeah. from Cleveland area? Yes. Probably around Yeah, it is. That's how you're talking about this. Okay, so I'm a Raiders fan. The Raiders are Browns people. I know this because my dad's a Browns fan. We typically don't see eye to eye with it. So me saying that and her finding that out, Sandy, what if she, she shot me a text or a phone call or an email and said, hey, Brian, so uh, you were picking on me in class in front of my girls. Uh, when you get here, I'm going to punch you in the nose. What's my best option for not getting punched? Not going. Not going at all. Not even showing up. Distance, proximity, right? But now let's say I'm already here. And she says the same thing. What do I do now? Run. I get away. And the second best is hide. Meaning I run. I get away. And not so much hide, but create a barrier. Say I don't have that option anymore. Say I can't get away. Yeah, but she's doing this. What's my best option? Create a barrier. And say something. I'm going to create a barrier. I'm going to say something. And the next thing we're going to do now is watch that shoulder move. So, so, so now back to business with Jamie. Because Jamie knows what Max is talking about. Doing Once Jamie's defensive posture is up, she's watching for this shoulder movement. The second she sees this shoulder movement, she's now closing the distance after she gains that defensive posture. Close the distance, Jamie. Boom. Notice she didn't just absorb that. Notice she didn't just stand back and wait for it. In self-defense. We're made of options. The best option is distance. If you don't have distance, your next best option is close the distance to then recreate it. And when I close the distance, what happens is, notice when Jamie stepped in, she cut the distance, I'm sorry, closed the distance and cut my effectiveness. Got it? So think about this for a second. Can you ladies play baseball or softball? Have you ever played baseball or softball? Have you ever played anything in the back? So, golf club. Golf club. okay, perfect. Golf club. <laughs> golf club. Anybody have a this? It's going to seem really, really odd. But what about a whip? You're thinking a bull or a horse or a whip? Probably not out right here. I always say that because my, my son actually is a, a, a bull rider. It's crazy that sounds. He was a bull rider before he went to the military. So, with all three of those things, and we're going to add a fourth, with all three of those things, the power is at the end of that. Golf club is the head, right? Baseball bat, the barrel, the end. Bull whip, the tip. A punch, the end. That's the most effective part. A grab, the end. You understand? So if I can somehow close the distance, she's going to cut the effectiveness just by stepping in. Just watch what happens. Just stand there, man. If I just do this, she's going to take the effect of that hard punch and it's full effectiveness. But if she just simply does nothing with her arms, but just simply just steps into it, step in, nothing with her arms, step in, she's still going to eat something but not the most effective part of it. You understand? And now, Jamie's little to that. So now, when Jamie does this and steps in, not only does she cut the effectiveness, but she also builds a frame. And she builds a strong frame. And from here, that frame, now she can choose different options. She can do a chin lift. You got my eyes. She can, if she wanted to go an elbow straight, she can go straight to my throat with that arm. Yes. She can do things now to make me want 
wants to back up. Because here's the thing, ladies, let's, let's, let's very serious about something. If you are in an event where you're getting grabbed, where you're getting attacked, you're in a bad situation, you are, are most likely not going to be able to overpower your attacker. Just be real with it. However, you are going to be able to make them think they don't want to do it anymore. That's making our number four, it's our principle number four, making the attacker feel like they have to defend themselves. So we want to mentally make them think, whoa, this became hard, I don't want this anymore. So do you remember when we talked about the, the, the predator, the tiger, the lion? Why would they go after a deer and not another lion? It's weaker, why else? Could be slower, why else? Not as much fight, and why won't they have as much fight? Have you guys ever seen that, that deer with like the long fangs and the big claws? Do you know why you've never seen that? It doesn't exist. So it doesn't have the fight that the tiger has. However, if somehow, some way, just for that split second, they could grow those things, that tiger won't want that anymore, right? So what I'm trying to get at here is for that split second, we could grow those fangs. Claws. You have to have that part of a lion that's fighting back. So that lion, that attacker, doesn't want that fight anymore. So that's what Jane is doing. She's bringing the fight down to me because she's cutting the effectiveness, and now she has different options. Because even if I'm going to try this here, even if I start to grab her, grab her, grab her, she's doing things now to fight back, creating a strong frame, making me second guess what I did. I don't want that easy fight. This looks like easy. She did defend herself. I grabbed her here, or I was grabbed her here, or I started to drag her this way. That's the easy fight. I want that. That's what I expect. But the second that I do this, and she comes in and starts doing this, I think, okay, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Right? That's what we want them to start thinking. Got it? Bring the fight to them by closing the distance. And I'm going to teach you the easiest way to do this, the most effective. We're going to teach you. So, very first thing, you guys already had defensive posture, right? We're going to do what's called an ideal placing. So, your arm, just watch first for a few seconds, and then I'm going to walk you through it. So, there's a couple things that I really want you to pay attention to the detail. Notice when she makes this frame, she's going elbow to my sternum, she's going her whole forearm to my pec, and her hands are open and over my top. She's making full contact here. The next thing you're noticing is, see her arm, how it's outside of 90 degrees? This would be 90. This is outside 90. You're going to be stronger in outside 90 position because your flex or your extensors are stronger than your flexors. Got it? So I want to try to achieve this position. Meaning, if she is here for any reason with 90, change with 90, she's just going to extend. Even if she has to step into it, the 90 and step into the yes. Even for that split second, my brain said, oh. You understand? So this is the very first thing that we're going to do. So for right now, get with your partner and just show us, both of you go back and forth, show us this outside 90 degree angle.
So some of you don't even believe what I'm saying. Some of you think, well, what the heck is that going to do? But I'm going to show you right now. So if you can, so here's the thing. Remember how I said outside 90 and your extensors are stronger than your flexors? When Jamie makes a fist, she's starting to flex. When she goes to a 90 degree angle, she's starting to flex. So here's what I want you to do. Go from your ideal placement to a 90 degree angle across the top of that person's chest. Got it? Now, bad guy, here's what you're going to do. You're only going to do what I tell you when I say now. I'm going to say three, two, one, now. And here's what you're going to do. Bad guy, you're going to reach up and you're going to give that person in front of you a big hug when I say now. Not yet. When I say now, it's a three, two, one, pull. And you're going to see Jamie's going to try to resist. I'm going to try to resist this a little bit. And she still starts to collapse. Okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to make that stronger. Okay, ready? So let's go first. Everybody that has their arm up, go keep your arm up 90 degrees. Okay, here we go. Let's get ready. Three, two, one. Bad guys, pull me. Pull, 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 Go back to the ideal placement. Go back to the ideal placement. Strong frame. Back to the ideal placement. Strong frame. Now you're going to resist and watch how much stronger you are with this frame. Three, two, one, and pull. Pull, 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 pull. pull. A little bit stronger, huh? Good. So, you guys see how you're a little bit stronger then. So let's explain that. Your extensors, once again, are stronger than your flexors. It's just how you're made up physiologically. You have three hands to your triceps and two hands to your biceps. I don't expect you to get, get in any of that. Just know that you're stronger here than you are here. So now let's switch. Let's let the other person try it. So go to ideal placement. Change that to a 90 degree angle. Make a fist across the top of the chest. Bad guys, when I say pull, I want you to pull. Three, two, one, pull. pull, 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 pull. Watch how much stronger you are. Three, two, one, pull. Pull, 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 pull. Good. Now let's try this, everybody. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to stand, first of all, who's the bad guys? Let's, let's pick up the bad guys. Bad guys? Bad guys, raise your hand. Bad guys, raise your hand. So we all know now who the bad guys are. Bad guys, you're going to stay bad guys until I say the word switch. Okay, so we're going to be bad guys for a little bit.
So let's do this. Bad guys, what do you got again? Good guys, you're going to stand like this when I say ready. When I say good guys, ready? Defensive posture. Now here's the other thing that you're going to do. You're going to step in and do that ideal placement and find that bicep when the bad person makes that shoulder movement. Remember how earlier we did that now drill? When you, when you don't stop, when you saw that shoulder, the second you see that shoulder move, go in with that idea of placement. Here we go, let's try this out. Good guys, ready? Means hands up. Bad guys, go. Good. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go.
a little easier for you guys because you guys got to practice it a little bit from the opposite side. So, first of all, remember this is what that schoolyard headlock looks like. I'm going to bring the shoulder back and point to the ear. Got it? That's what our bad guys are going to look like. It's going to simulate a grab, a punch, a headlock, anything that I can. Air grab, whatever it is. Got it? Good guys. Remember that ideal placement? That's what you're going to, okay? Also, let's just add this in here. Try to pop that bicep with that opposite hand. Here we go. Let's go slow to medium. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Not yet, not yet. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Good. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Okay, so let's progress. Hey, good guys. Hey, good guys, listen up for me. Instead of waiting for it, good guys, I want you to step into it. The second you see that, that shoulder movement, I want you to step into it. Hey, bad guys. This is, it looks like mostly daughters right now are bad guys. Or bad guys, right? No, moms are bad guys. No, daughters are bad guys. Yeah, daughters. Hey, guess what? Hey, daughters. This is your chance to really. <laughs>
understand and what she's driving into me is that I get placement. And she's going for this arm as supporting calves. So now what you girls did, the second that you did this, your backpack grabbed on. You saw it was stronger this way, right? But now what happens if they don't let go? What happens if I'm really trying to grab on, grab her hair, grab her head, grab her shoulders? I'm really not letting go. What can she do? We showed you a couple things to do. Do you remember this? We didn't practice it, but we mentioned a couple things. What's one thing she can do to do with elbow? Jane 
maybe that's another option for you. Instead of just using your arms, does anybody play sports in here? Can I ask her? So let me ask this, ask this question. You're about to learn a very valuable tool in sports. Where does your power come from when you're batting, when you're shooting, when you're striking, when you're throwing? Where's your power come from? Tennis. Where? Oh, Sandy's got it. The hips. Your power doesn't come from your arms, it comes from your hips. So we generate power from the floor up and through our hips. So with that being said, Jamie, what she's going to do, notice how she takes it this way. Notice she's going to drive this elbow down about an inch. But when she does it, you notice her hips drop? Yeah. So she's not just going to take this arm and slide it over because what Lila was doing with me was she's holding it here. Or I can maybe jam it down with my own elbow or grab it. But regardless, if she drops her hips with that elbow, see what the Anders did over there, everybody? And then she drives her hips straight back through and walks forward. She's now generating power forward. Up. In order for me to take the power and effectiveness away from somebody, I have to take their balance. This is physical. I take their balance by taking their head over their heels. Let's play game real quick, ready? Keep your feet straight across the line. Not not the way that part of the game either, but game nonetheless. So here's what I want you to do. Just simply rock back to your heels. Ooh, you have to pitch yourself? Not, not very comfortable. You see how your brain automatically caught, caught yourself and your brain automatically said, hey, go forward. It's the same thing. If I step on something sharp with my left, my brain does this. I don't say, hey, this hurts. I need to go to my right. My brain automatically does it. That's the number four that we're talking about. Make the defender feel like they have, I'm sorry, the attack that I'm making them feel like they have to defend themselves. In their brain, not just physically. The way that Jamie's doing that is she's driving that chin up, head going over my heels, and now I'm thinking, I don't like this anymore. You understand? So that's just another option. Remember we said self-defense is like opening a menu? It's options. What's your favorite thing to, to, to eat today? Well, or make them eat though. Here we go. So I'm going to say good guys ready, bad guys go. This time, actually before we do that, let's practice this all, all at the same time. Everybody go to defensive posture. Now let's pretend like we did that ideal place here. Pretend like you're that ideal place here. Here we go, watch this elbow. Ready, drive it down, and back up. And just like this, just pretend for now. Right now, face this way. Go ideal placement, pretend like you're in an ideal placement. Drop it elbow down, drive it up. Ready, ideal, drive it down, drive it up. Now let's do this. Drive it down, drive it up, and take two steps forward. Good, and then back up. Here we go, let's do it again. Defensive posture, ideal placement. Drive it elbow down, two steps forward. Driving it up. One more time. Here we go. Then we're going to do it to each other. Ideal placement. Drive it down, drive it up, and forward. Here we go. Pick out who the bad guy is, who the good guy is. Hey guys, I don't think I have to tell you this, but be very careful with each other because this is sensitive. Your head's not supposed to go through that. Here we go. Great guys, you're ready. Bad guys, go. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go. Drop that elbow down, Emma. Drop that elbow down. And underneath your chin. Underneath your chin. And we're just going to just put it on your hand. Your hand. Right. There. I'm trying to go. There you go. Good guys, ready? Bad guys, go. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. And switch. Let's switch. Good guys ready. Bad guys go. Punch, grab, and drive that chin straight up.
you guys something real quick. I think a couple of you picked this out, but now we're gonna see, let's, uh, let's really try to dissect this a little bit. If Jamie being the good guy, and I'm the bad guy, if I'm really trying to hurt her, Jamie's strong, Jamie's tough, Jamie's smart, Jamie's so nice. She also has yeah. a sparkly like jacket with friends on <laughs> yeah, she does have friends. She wanted to Jamie, unfortunately, all those things, but she's not stronger than me. Yes. Okay? Yes. 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 <laughs> she might be better looking, a little smarter, but a little nicer. No, she's definitely not nicer. I'm the nicer one. Wow. Well, so, when I do this, that already is not good for her. When I do this, it's still not good for her. But you guys are defending this. Regardless, if I'm not letting go because I'm stronger and now she starts to drive this in and that's not working, she dips that elbow down and she drives this up. Maybe it's not working as much as I'm digging this down. What I want you to do is take these fingers. We're not going to do this today. But where she's going to take these fingers and go straight through my eyes and step forward. Ow. You understand? Ow. Ow is right. Well, so Mika says, Ow. So how do you guys would not want that to happen? Yeah. So let me make a point here. Don't if you don't want that to happen, guess who else doesn't want it to happen? The person person. attacking you. Yes. The person attacking you doesn't want that to happen. So if you start thinking, how, what are the things that I wouldn't want to get hit or grab, I'm going to go for those things. What you just now have one step ahead of that attack. That was all the attacker's thinking is, I want to take this person, and I want to put this person in my car. I want to take this person, take them from point A to point B. I want to hurt this person, but I need to take this person first. I want to take whatever this person has. What that person's not thinking is, what can I do to effectively hurt this good guy? However, she, being the good guy, is thinking, if this person is attacking me, this bad guy is now in my space, trying to hurt me, take me away from my family, what are the best places that I can poke, grab, pull, strike to make them want to back up? You guys just did it. So lifting that chin, taking those fingers to the eyes, that's going to be effective. Let me explain something to you with the fingers in the eyes. If some, ladies, I've taught a lot of classes for a lot of years. And how many, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said, hey, what's your best move? I wouldn't have to be doing this for a living, I'd be doing it for free. Okay? Meaning I would have had a lot of money. There is no best move. But if somebody said, okay, a million dollars to be the best move possible, you want to know what it could be? Yeah. It, it depends on where what you can grab, but if I could grab, I would go for the eyes. If I can't see, I lose the will of fight. If I can't breathe, I can't fight. If I feel pain, I don't want to fight. So start to understand that. Even if she doesn't get to this position here, even if she's, say, we'll say she missed that, and now I've got her here, she has to start thinking, yeah, mm -hmm. where can she grab, poke, pull, strike that's going to hurt me the worst? You understand? So let's just go over this real quick, and here's, yeah, it's really, I hate to end on this, but if her hands are down and she missed it, you notice what Jamie just did? Mm -hmm. What she do to She grabbed it yet, don't, don't go any further. She grabbed, <laughs> she grabbed like, a place that's really sensitive. She grabbed a place that's super sensitive, right? We don't teach to strike there. We teach to use a doorknob. Grab, twist, pull, and step through the door. So now, is that the best way? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so here's the thing. What I, I don't need the best way to do Yes, that is the best way to do that. Is that the best thing I can do to make them back up? Not necessarily, but it's probably third or fourth. The best is to go to the eyes and throw. Mm -hmm. Then go there. So just keep that in mind. So if she has the opportunity to reach out and go to my eyes, she's going to do that. Because that in my brain makes me say, I need to get out of this and need to back up. Okay, have you guys ever had anything in your eye, an eyelash, a piece of dirt, maybe lose someone's contact? And did you think when it got in your eye, I'll wait till next Tuesday to take that out? <laughs> or did everything in the entire world stop and you were like, I gotta fix this 
a great job. Yeah. So I want you to think if that happens to your eye, it's going to happen to their eye as well. Listen, ladies, these are hard things to talk about. They're hard things to hear. But unfortunately, there are some bad people out there. I don't want you to leave today thinking that there's all these bad people trying to get me because Deanna, myself, Jamie, we all believe, I'm sure the people in here also believe, there are more good people out there than there are bad. There's a lot more good people than bad. Just the unfortunate side of that is it only takes one bad person. So we still just at least have to remember that, and that's part of our acceptance, uh, part of our personal safety and threat awareness of becoming a weapon, or having a weapon mindset. You know, we mentioned we want to create weapons in here for good, so you guys have that confidence to be able to defend yourself and walk around like, I don't want to have to hurt somebody, but if I had to get back to my family, I would have to do that. Okay? Understanding that is also now accepting the fact that there could be a bad person out there. They're not just looming around everywhere, but all it takes is one, and we have to recognize that. And the, the last thing that I'll tell you before we end today is always try to get away first. Find mom, find dad, find a friend, find somebody else that cares. Find somebody else in general just because now you are a cat instead of just one individual. Absolutely yell out. That's a great question. You can absolutely yell out. Get people to see what's happening. There's more good people than bad, but that one bad person can really make a difference in your life for bad. So let's try to avoid it. And avoiding it is recognizing it and then leaving. Got it? So we have a lot of different classes. Look for these classes. If you guys are on social media, look for social yeah. on social media and look for classes coming up. And now that you took this, keep going with it. Yeah. Sandy's coming.